Hello, everyone. My name is Michael Brooks. I'm the Vice Chairman of the Sullivan County Legislature, and welcome to this edition of Let's Talk Sullivan. Today, we are not at the Government Center, obviously. We're up at Hangar 7 at the Sullivan County Airport, and we're taking this opportunity today to talk about Hotsula Air. And with me, as always, is our Chairman, Robert Doherty. And I'd like to introduce to the community of Sullivan County who do not, who does not know, Ellie Rowe, the driving force behind Hot Solar Air. So Rob, I'll, give, I'll hand it over to you. Hey, thanks Mike, I appreciate it. And let's get to know Ellie. Hi Ellie. Hey Rob. How, how, how's it going today? Oh, fantastic. Glad to hear that. So what, what does Hot Solar mean? So uh, interesting, Hot Solar is a Hebrew word. It comes okay. from the word, uh, just a generic word called rescue in Hebrew. Okay. And, um, it actually started all way back in 1969, okay. the year I was born, a little place called Williamsburg in Brooklyn. Does anybody know what a payphone is? Do you know what a payphone is? <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> My kids would have no idea if I asked them what a payphone is. So a um, guy by the name of Herschel Weber, he, his friend uh, was having a heart attack, clutched his chest, having a hard time breathing, and they went out to the street, they dialed 911. And he was standing next to his friend, feeling pretty hopeless. And uh, it called, waiting, waiting, and 20 minutes after they called, his friend dies. And 20 minutes later, the ambulance shows up, and FDNY, which was back then New York City EMS, said, we're sorry, there's nothing we can do. Wow. He's dead. And they put a sheet on top of him and covered it up. And then this guy, Herschel Weber, says, never again, not under my watch. So he went out and bought one oxygen tank. And he said, if it ever happens, I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. And that's what happened for a little while. And then he said, wait a second. What's going to happen if I'm not around? Or what if I'm treating somebody with one tank and somebody else needs it afterwards? So we came up with this idea called, let's make something called Hot Solar Ambulance. And it started off super primitive, maybe a dozen guys. Mm -hmm. A few had an oxygen tank, a few had a first aid bag. If you had a little basic uh, stair chair and some equipment, and they just got together and they, you know, this one guy with a dream yeah. said, hey, that's what I'm gonna do. Well, the next year, Lower East Side of Manhattan, just on the other side of the Williamsburg Bridge, mm -hmm. they opened up a hot solar branch. And then a year or two later, Crown Heights, they opened up a hot solar branch. And then Borough Park and Flatbush, other neighborhoods in the city. And I'm actually English. I know I don't sound like I'm English. <laughs> My accent's been adulterated and perverted by American society. <laughs> but I have a British like many other things. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a British passport. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I do. And um, and uh, my dad, when we came in 1977, he saw a little sign on our local shul of the synagogue said, Is anybody interested in starting Hot Solar in Queens? And he said, Hey, I'll do that. And in 1977, Queens had Hot Solar. And it kept matriculating where there was a Jewish community around mm -hmm. the world to the point that today you'd be hard pressed to find a community. I'm talking South Africa and Australia have. London and Switzerland and Mexico City and Panama wow. and Israel. You go around the world all because one guy with a dream said, hey, and I have an idea. And a dead friend. And a de <laughs> one dead friend. And you know, my favorite expression is actually give somebody fish and they have a meal for the night teach them how to fish and they have a meal forever. Instead of just carrying that oxygen tank, mm -hmm. he took his act of kindness that he wanted to do as one person and it grew exponentially and multifold and continues to grow where now there are literally thousands and thousands of doctors, paramedics and EMTs that leave their, whatever their job is, they could be a teacher, they could be a lawyer, they could be a, a bus driver, they could be a, a, you know, a, a work at home, engineer and when a call goes out for help in their community they drop what they're doing so that's what hot solar is as a general about um three years ago that's actually more like four years when we had the conversation but about four years ago i went to the executive branch of hot solar and i said i got an idea i'm a commercial pilot i've been doing this like herschel weber did with one oxygen tank i was doing with my own aircraft as one guy commercial pilot, happens to be a paramedic, happens to own an airplane, 
And I was just that one guy. And I had the same epiphany. And I said, what if I'm not available? What if I'm on a call? What if I'm out of state or out of country? Why don't we open up another branch of Atzola? And they're like, where? And I said, in the sky. And they said, sure. And <laughs> afterwards, they'll tell you, if you meet some of the guys, they'll say, it was just easier to say sure than to argue with you. <laughs> we knew it wasn't happening anyway. And, and that's kind of the joke. And some really, really great guys over there. And um, since then, I've had incredible support from the executive branch of Hatsolo, mm -hmm. but really from almost every Hatsolo branch around the world calls us. And sometimes we can help them with a private aircraft, and other times we send a team mm -hmm. to be able to help them. But if somebody in Mexico needs to get a patient from Mexico City to a hospital 100 miles away, they'll use their ground aircraft. If somebody in Mexico City needs to get a young girl from Queens. This is a, a true story that happened, an actual story. On a Friday night, she fell off a balcony and snapped the back in half and had to go to one of the Northwell hospitals, North Shore Hospital in Long Island. What are they gonna do in Mexico? So they called us and we sent the plane and we flew her back. That, that's the type of work mm -hmm. we do. And we do it for free. And we support the Hatsola branches throughout the world when their need for transport exceeds the ability to do it and with it's ground not transport. Just a the Jewish community that you help, you help everybody. We, we, Hatsola around the world helps everybody. Okay. They're primarily in their Jewish mm. geographic region, yeah. so you know they they won't go out hundreds of miles yeah, away or outside. Yeah. But when when somebody calls them, they help, and we have when they have their patients that need transport, they call us. We help. We don't we don't ask for religions. How do you support yourself financially? So, Hatzola is based on uh, donations, mm -hmm. and um, the Jewish community has been exceptional mm -hmm. um, in donating both aircraft, operating expenses for so, the so, so one of these airplanes, not one, all. All, all airplanes all have, been, have been donated to Hatzola Air. How many planes do you have? We have four currently. Plans are to have seven more. Our, you know, these things change, but mm -hmm. our, our current business plan um, consists of seven sub-bases. So New York, Florida, LA, Chicago, Israel, London, and South America will be our seven sub-bases. What we put in each area is probably gonna be something along the equivalent of a Citation 10. Okay. That's our aircraft of choice. I think you've seen that aircraft that was here yes. the other day. So we have multiple aircraft like that. The reason why we like it is it has decent range, so mm -hmm. it can go about 32, 3300 nautical miles. A nautical mile, by the way, is 1.15 times a regular mile. So 100 nautical miles is 115 conventional miles, right? And um, we like it because it's the fastest plane in the world outside of military jets, and it flies about Mach 0.92, so almost the speed of sound. Wow. And um, super aircraft, we call it like a great, it's officially called a super mid, but it's a great midsize, mid-range, can't go across the world, but it'll do a good six hours, five or six hour mission mm -hmm. at a pretty good clip, at yeah. a good speed. So we can easily all day go New York to LA and LA to New York. This aircraft behind us is, was our first airplane, is a Lear 60. It's one of the larger Lear. Lear jets are pretty famous, small aircraft. And this one, as an example, will be able to go typically from LA to New York but won't be able to go from New York to LA. And the reason for that is winds typically, yeah. there's no rule, but typically they'll go from west to east. So when they go from west to east, if you have 100 miles an hour on your tail, in five hours of flying, you've got an extra 500 miles that's you know in, yeah. above it. But if you're going from east to west and you've got 100 miles at your tail, now you have to fly an extra 500 miles oh, okay. to be able to get there. And we typically would make a stop going there. The Citation 10s can go nonstop you know, all day from New York to LA and, and further, perhaps. Wow. Yeah. Have so any helicopters? So we don't have helicopters yet. <coughs> it is in our business plan to have helicopters. With helicopters, it's kind of like the old army, you know, expression, two is one and one is none. You, you always gotta get two because one is gonna be down. And so our goal is to be able to get where we keep them, what we do with them, you know, that's a little bit still up for question. But I will tell you that we get, for every single request, and now we're probably getting over 20 requests a week, which is an astronomical number. Certainly in the last couple of weeks, we were hitting those types of metrics. Um, many flights just don't qualify. So 
I'll give you an example. Somebody asked us recently, can we fly from New York to Boston? So I said to them, listen, to go from New York to Boston, Manhattan to Boston, you would have to drive from Manhattan to Westchester. From Westchester, you have to get in, a, get the patient out of an ambulance, into our plane, then taxi, wait for clearance. That's, you know, let's just say it's a 40 minute drive from Manhattan to Westchester. From Westchester till you get in the plane is another 10, 15 minutes. Another 10, 15 minutes for clearance while you taxi. And when we have a patient on board and medical staff on board, we, we use a designated call sign called medevac. So we do have a typically at least as short a route as the FAA will help us, the equivalent of when an ambulance or a police car goes, lights and sirens, to a call. But it doesn't make sense because then it's a 40 minute ride. Then you got a taxi to the terminal. Then you got to get off and get into an ambulance. So by the time you're done, what could be a two hour and 50 minute ride or three hours with an ambulance can be done in two hours and 40 minutes in an airplane. Correct. And it just, and you've got the movement and you've got the pressure changes and you've got, you know, that in and out, in and out. I, and I advise people and my team, frankly, advise people, let's not do it. So for those types of short range transports, yet critical transports, a helicopter, you know, nothing, nothing compares to it. You can go straight from Manhattan and land in a helipad in Boston or, and, and boom, you're right service. there. Our typical service is, by definition, doesn't require a helicopter because if it can go the distance of a helicopter, it can go by ground. And if it goes by ground, then our partners in the hot solar branches around the world will, will travel. Mm -hmm. what, what made you come to Sullivan County to want to... You know, I actually get asked that a lot. <laughs> I bet you do. And it was really a combination of three or four things. I want to point something out. Mm -hmm. Right above my head, do you see those three Hebrew letters? Yes. That's an abbreviation for, with God's help. It's mm -hmm. three Hebrew words. In Hebrew, it's besiyata deshmaya. It just means with God's help. And it's really with the help of God, right? And that's how we're able to, to operate. I, I told, you know, uh, I've told my kids, and I tell my friends, and I've told uh, Mike McGuire, the Sullivan County attorney, uh, when we first met. I said, never met him. You never met him? He's an okay guy. I mean, <laughs> I like him. I don't know if you do, but I, I like him. I told, I told the Sullivan County attorney, I said, you know, every morning, I have an interesting routine. You know, obviously, I got to check my WhatsApps, and I got to go to the bathroom at my age every morning. But before I do that, I pass the window wherever I am in the world. And it could be Salt Lake City where we picked up a guy who fell off a cliff and it's snowing outside, or it could be Miami and it's sunny. That's uh, our busiest route is South mm. Florida and New York. And it could be London in the fog where we've transported a 20-year-old you know, girl on her end of life. Mm. She actually spoke in Sullivan County during an event we had recently. And every day it's different. But my routine every single morning is the same. I look up at the sky and I say, God, there are only two people in this world, givers and takers. I beg you, let me be a giver today. That's my blessing. And I, I told my kids, in the seesaw of life, you're either taking or giving. I mean, let's, let's be real. Correct. And Absolutely. the only thing you can't take away from me is what I gave away. What I have, I can lose. So, you know, we have an incredible team, volunteer doctors run by two guys that um, you guys have met here in Sullivan County, Dr. Avishai Newman, who's an anesthesiologist, mm -hmm. he's a medical director, and Dr. Mike Korshko, who's a chief of electrophysiology. He's a cardiologist at Einstein and Jacoby, two big centers in New York. These guys are volunteers, and they're, they're amazing. And then we've got a whole case management and dispatch team uh, run by Brochi Gross, who's a mom of, I don't know, maybe five, four or five kids, and Abigail Eisenstadt, who's a mom of five kids, who, who just, they have a team of volunteer house moms mm. who just stop whatever they're doing and help strangers for free 24 hours a day. Even on Shabbos where you'll see most Jewish dads and moms don't <coughs> carry a phone, mm -hmm. they'll kind of hide it and when it rings they'll drop what they're doing to be able to help. So to come back to your question, why Sullivan County? God caused something last, it was actually last September, it's exactly a year ago, almost probably to the day where one of our aircraft broke down here in Sullivan County. And it wasn't a big deal, we had parked, we probably left the light on inside, and when we came to start it, there's something called 
an APU, an auxiliary power unit. It's a mm -hmm. small little engine that sits in the back of the plane, and we fire that up, and that gives us the power and the air to start the main engines. Well, on this Friday afternoon, after all the bungalow colonies and camps left, we broke down in Sullivan County. And have you been to Sullivan County International Airport? I mean, I think they had a plane that flew in once from Canada. They called it <laughs> Sullivan County International Airport, right? I live three miles from there. <laughs> there you go. We said, okay, no big deal. Let's get a GPU, a ground power unit. Mm. So I, I walk out of the plane and I go to the guy at the terminal. There's a magnificent terminal over here yeah. in Sullivan County Airport. There will be. <laughs> there will be even more. <laughs> and I say, hey, do you have a, a GPU? And he looked at me like, like a meteor <laughs> fell on my head or something. He's like, no, we don't have a GPU. I said, well, can I get a GPU? I can't. I got to boost it. And, and the Jewish people have all sorts of like crazy organizations, and they all do this charity. I'm thinking, who's going to come with like booster cables and boost <laughs> a Citation 10, right? And the answer was nobody. And then I see a guy walking by a hangar. And this is going to sound like a joke this story, but it's <laughs> all actually happened. And I go over to the guy, and I go, excuse me. Do you have a GPU by any chance? He says, yeah. I go, can I use it? He says, no. I said, I mean, I'm a volunteer paramedic with an air ambulance 30 yards from you. You're not gonna let me use a GPU for a volunteer air ambulance? And he like looks at our plane and he goes, all right, I'll let you use it. Turns out it's this guy, Al Gary. Al and Gary, yeah, yeah. Al and Gary, I don't know, I've never met him, but uh, he says to me, well, I work for this guy. I go, well, I'm sure for an air ambulance. And he goes, you're right, he's a good guy. I'm sure for an air ambulance. So he comes over and we plug it in, and mm. the, the airplane starts in a second. And I, I, don't, I don't want this guy to have to push it back. I want it to be a nice guy. So I offer it to help him, and we're, we're shoving this thing back. And I peek in, and I see this hangar in Sullivan County. <laughs> and I say to him, how does one get a hangar in Sullivan County? So he says to me, I have no idea. It's something with the legislature. I, I don't know what the guy says to me. So I just recently uh, um, had a conversation with the sheriff. So I called up the sheriff's office and I spoke with uh, the under sheriff, Eric yeah. Shibodi. I know him. You know him. Yeah. All right. And I said to him, how does one go in Sullivan County about getting a hangar? So he says to me, I don't really know, but why don't we call the Sullivan County attorney? And so we meet this fantastic guy, Mike McGuire. And so you say. So I say. I mean, that's my opinion. You know, I don't really know him you know, for more than a year. But either he's a great actor or a great guy. One of the two, right? And, and I, he says, where are you? And I said, I'm in Sullivan County. So they're like, OK, we can come and meet you in the airport. So I said, I got an issue. We can't turn the plane off and actually meet you because if we turn the plane off, it's not going to start again. Yeah. Again, this is going to sound like a joke, but this is actually what happened. So the sheriff, the under sheriff, and Mike McGuire come to the airport and we meet on the plane and they listen to what Hatzola needs. So I said, we need a home. We're in Westchester, which would be and probably still stay forever one of our seven you know, local sub mm. bases, but we can't afford to build a big hangar at mm. global headquarters in Sol in Westchester or Teterboro or Farmville. They're just too, they're too tight, they're too mm. expensive. So I said, our fantasy is to have, find a place that's within some sort of Jewish region somewhere. Could be Miami and it could be, you know, New York. And we'd love to explore the conversation. Well, Sullivan County was terrific. I mean, terrific in the sense that they weren't, you know, whatever made sense for the county and whatever made sense for Hatzola, it was super fair, it was organized, it was a disciplined conversation where we each really laid out what we need. And I think that we're going to bring tremendous value to the county because to have a real organization calling Sullivan County its home is impressive. It can drive a NetJets or a Delta Private Jets or, mm -hmm. or XO or one of these other big organizations to see hey, look what Sullivan County has. And in fact, I will tell you at our open house, um, I don't know if you guys know this, but um, NetJets sent a representative. They have an yes. office called EJM, executive chairman. Yes. We met her. Yeah. Joanne, yeah. I forget her name. Donnelly. Yeah. Donnelly. 
and she came, and she was impressed with Sullivan County, and she was impressed with what we did, and they're like, she's like, I've been taking this mess of trouble. So I love to create win-wins, and we have a fantastic team, volunteer doctors, volunteer lawyers, accountants, business people, dispatch, case management. It looks like, you know, okay, you can just have one guy here, one guy there, but we have, a, we have an incredible team. And we'd like to bring that team here. We'd like to build a real headquarters. This is temporary. Even in our temporary headquarters. Yeah, very nice. It's, it turned out quite nicely. Well, well, let me, my, when we had the ribbon cutting for the, uh, the hangar that was redone, which we'll go and see in a little while, I'll have to say, I, I've lived in Sullivan County most of my life. I came here to the ribbon cutting. I didn't know what to expect. Uh, we had met, you had, you had addressed the legislature. But I came here, talked to a lot of people, some of the EMTs, doctors, and others. And, and I've told folks this story. When I left here, and this is God's honest truth, I was actually, there was an inspiration when I left here. And maybe he's going to become Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was. And because talking to the people, you, you realize there's something greater than yourself. And to the point you've been <coughs> making during our conversation here, it's very true. That's what I, I literally felt that here, talking to the people. And I was extremely impressed and inspired, quite frankly. And uh, uh, the, the work you do, the humanitarian um, work is, is amazing. And, uh, you know, so I, I just wanted to share that personal experience because it's very real. It's amazing. I will tell you that um, I was actually brought to tears this past Friday night. We had a, a guy who um, about two years ago, we flew a 38 year old from Savannah to Nashville for a heart transplant. It was one of our earlier calls. It was actually on this plane right behind us. And his mother called our hotline on Friday, crying, screaming. And our case managers didn't even understand where she was. She was like a wreck. And it turns out that her son's heart was failing to the point that it wasn't pumping and his arms and legs, I wasn't there so I can't tell you that I saw this, but this is what they say, his arms and legs were losing function. They were actually becoming paralyzed. His organs were shutting down because his heart was completely not pumping and not putting out um, like it is. And, um, and we, have, we, we launched the team Friday evening as Shabbos was starting and we, you know, religious people won't typically drive or, or use any electronics or machinery or anything on Shabbos, but to save a life, the Hatzal ambulances go and the Hatzal airplanes go. And Dr. Groshko and two superstar paramedics, guy Robbie Zeitz and Shmuel Mazrovsky, two guys they went with and they flew out to, to pick him up. And they made Kiddush, like the Friday night you know, services at 36,000 feet. And, you know, they were telling over how inspired they were to be able to help one of our own. He's his, his actually a family member of a Hatzola, one of the Hatzola directors for many years, who was literally flying our own in the middle of the night. And, um, and we were able to save a life, and he's doing okay. Well, that's great stuff. So that just, just literally just happened between when I've seen you last and now. And, and we've had so many of these types of stories. I mean, we've, we've been, the day after the event, we flew to the Montreal border to take a 32-year-old lady who was, had breast cancer spread to her brain. She had metastasis in her brain, ended up going blind, and they, she needed some proton treatment in Tampa, and that was the, or Jacksonville, I don't remember. That was the only place they could do it. And we just did it, and we launched for free, and you know, and. Uh, two weeks ago, we had a, a similar type story where we had a 40-year-old that was in Robert Wood, no, not Robert Wood Johnson, the, the hospital in Texas. I forget the name of it. Oh, MD Anderson. And they called us. They said that he, they gave up on him. Could we fly him home? And it was, just didn't sound that emergent or not emergent, but we said yes. We did it that afternoon. He died less than 24 hours later. And I went to the Shiva house, something that I almost never do, but she called the wife if I could come. And I walked in and she said, it might not have been a medical emergency like some of your others, but he got to say goodbye to his children and his kids got to say goodbye to him. And we did that for free. And, you know, say people ask, what does it cost? I say it's priceless, right? Correct. 
And, and that's, that's really what, what it's all about. How can we make a difference in people's lives? How can we be a giver? And how can you know, we improve? As long as God allows us to do it, that's what we're going to do. Now, is there a, your, your colors of your plane really, I mean, they, they're, they're bright and noticeable. Is there a story behind the colors? There, 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 actually, there actually is a story. You know, when we got the plane, we knew that people, somebody had donated the first plane, and we knew that we were going to get, and in fact, a guy donated a G550, we didn't even talk about this, but a G550, we had flown his mom, and he was inspired. And he called us up and he said, what can I do to help? And I didn't really take him seriously, I'm gonna be very honest with you at the time. So I answered him, I said, listen, what happens if Hatzola Air gets a call for a family from New York that goes to Costa Rica, car goes off a cliff, two parents are killed, two boys have broken backs, and they're in two hospitals, and they're four and six years old, and two girls, 10 and 12, have third degree burns over 90% of their body, and they're in two other hospitals. Now you got a family in Costa Rica, six bodies. What's well, a little plane like this, or, or a citation plane gonna do? So he says to me, what's the answer? I said, the answer is a G550. We can take it nonstop to Israel, because it's got a 14 and a half hour range. And we can do multi-patient transport, so in the event of a disaster like I've been all over the world, right? So in Haiti during the earthquakes and the hurricanes and, and the... In the Houston. Ukraine? You were just in oh, Ukraine? just in Ukraine. Yeah. In Houston during the floods. So we want to be able to transport a lot of folks. It's not always uh, an airplane with a stretcher. It's, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's a team of people. So uh, he gave us a plane a couple of weeks later. He gave us a G550. Amazing. So, uh, you know, we're going to paint that. But to answer your question about the colors, we wanted it to be unique. We wanted it to show mission. And um, the fire engines, right, the rescue fire engines, have this neon yellow. And I actually wanted to paint the whole plane neon yellow. But it looked a little a little much, a little ostentatious, a little, yeah. some say gross. I thought it was a little cool, but <laughs> it was a much, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. So then we took the inspiration from, um, from the Coast Guard. They have a white aircraft with a red band goes right. around. And we thought that we would take the rescue, the similar type of look, and have the rescue neon band, and then put it against the, the navy blue. And, and the contrast, all of our colors, like all the airplanes, the vehicles, they all coordinate very, very nicely in fact. They do. Even on the patches, we have a, a coordination. So, so that's where we're at. And, and um, it really kind of became our signature look. And since then, it's interesting, uh, Miami Hatzola, has adopted our colors on their ambulances. And there's even a neighborhood in Israel called Shari Chesed, which is right in the middle of Jerusalem. And they called me up, they go, can we use your colors? I said, I'd be honored. So now their, their grand wow. team in Israel has uh, this navy in the end. And I, I'd love to see one day all the hot souls in the world adopt the same, uh, yeah. like, you know, McDonald's? Maybe a, Jew, a Jewish boy like me shouldn't use a non-kosher example, but <laughs> I'm going to use it anyway for a branding. Be brave. <laughs> you see, right, you see that, that yellow M, right? And you can just identify. Yeah, you know absolutely. what it is. So if you look behind you on the wall, these are a whole bunch of hot solar branches, and, and they, they all have a different look and a different color. But, um, no. but you know, from our perspective, we all share one mission. We share one objective, and that is to help the less fortunate. And, you know, this hangar is run by a guy, Mendel Sorkin, who is incredible. He's allowed us to be in Sullivan County. He runs our facilities. He runs our whatever requirements we have as we grow. And, and we have some pretty exciting plans to build a real center over here that this can be the global headquarters and can manage the process and the flow throughout the world. That's incredible. Fantastic. That's our goal. We love Sullivan County. Well, I'd like to thank uh, Rob and uh, the aforementioned uh, Mike McGuire, the county attorney. Uh, he was instrumental in bringing Hotzala Air here and also, of course, to Ellie Rowe. Um, uh, this interview, um, I think, will touch a lot of people in Sullivan County uh, who aren't familiar with what you do. And uh, you know, it's, uh, I think we should be humbled and, and honored that a humanitarian um, group, uh, for lack of a better word, um, is coming here to Sullivan County. Uh, they work 
the work they do definitely makes you think about things greater than yourself. Mm. So until next time, bye for now. <laughs>